Ahoy there, Captain Bensi here, coming at you with another video for EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be looking at the Angel Cartel Dramiel, which by now most of you should know is by far my favourite ship currently in EVE Echoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to showcase this absolute beast of a ship, we're going to look at its stats and how to fit it, we're going to look at how to progress into flying this ship, that is to say, what kind of ships should you be using and what kind of skills would you be training in order to get into this ship, and then we're going to have a live fire demonstration at the end so do stay tuned for that should be a lot of fun anyway if you enjoy this video let me know by hitting like on it subscribe to the channel for all things eve echoes and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live as i am updating seven days a week now let me know what topics you want me to cover in future videos either by commenting down below or finding me on social media and if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel you can do so by joining us on patreon details are on screen now that said and done, let's talk about this absolute unit. The Dramiel is what is known as a pirate faction frigate. Now in EVE Echoes currently there are five pirate factions, which are the Blood Raider Covenant in Sanchez Nation if you're in Amar space, Guristus Pirates if you're up in Kaldari space, at Serpentis Corporation in Galente space, and down in Mimitar you will find Angel Cartel. Each of these has a frigate, a cruiser, and a battleship, and I've covered some of these in previous videos. Most of you by now will know that I'm a big fan of the pirate faction frigates, the Dramiel especially. Now these are not cheap to make. If you want to build one of these, you need to find a what is called a dead space anomaly. These are very difficult encounters with some very powerful ships that will drop angel debris in the case of an angel dead space or a Gerstus dead space will drop Gerstus debris, that kind of thing. You can use those to then reverse engineer the blueprints and build the ship from there. Now these are very expensive ships. Ultimately, the manufacturing cost for the Dramiel alone currently sits at 55 million isk. That's the cost just to turn the oven on. That's not including the ingredients themselves, which... <laughs> Take a look at that blueprint. It's terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying. But my guys clubbed together. We've made a Dramiel. Let's now have a look at it. Now, if we look at its statistics page here, you can see that it has three high slots, three mid slots, three low slots, and three of each of the power grid and uh, mechanical rigs. Fairly small cargo hold capacity, but it's a frigate, what do you expect? With a fairly decent defense of 3974. Now, curiously, this is not overly spread um, one way or the other. You can see that that's actually equal on shield and armor, and you can kind of tank it either way. I've actually chosen to tank it neither way, but we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, nice, nice little uh, vague comment there. Capacitor of 639, fairly fast recharge time um, compared to other ships with a decent recharge rate of 6.6 kilojoules per second. Lock targets maximum of 5. It's got a lot of great stats going for it here. Warp speed of 5.8U is an important one to come back to, along with that flight velocity of 47.0. Uh, Another key point here is the signature radius of 20.6. This is a tiny tiny ship that is incredibly difficult to hit that's smaller than a slasher just to give some like you know understanding for that that's smaller than a slasher but let's have a look at its trait description now starting on the right hand side here the dromiel has a roll bonus of 50 percent increased warp speed which means that 5 au per second is actually 7.5 au per second when warping which allows it to relocate very quickly very easily and actually is great for just doing encounters because you can warp across the universe in half the time it takes anyone else Warp acceleration plus 50% means that you reach your total warp speed as quickly um, as possible. Very useful for getting out of a tight situation. And finally, 5 seconds increased damage control activation time. Now we will talk about damage control units a bit more when we get to the fitting, but just suffice it to say that a, a, a Dramiel's damage control unit lasts 5 seconds longer than if it's fitted to any other ship. On the left hand side there you can see that every skill we have in advanced small cannon operation gives us an additional small cannon damage of plus 10% and a reduction of 5% to the small cannon activation time. At full 5 therefore that's 50% extra damage and 25% faster activation which basically means that the 3 turrets that are fitted to this act as if they are 6 turrets. It kicks out some real dangerous damage. Below this as well you can see Advanced Frigate Command Bonus will give you an additional 7.5% small cannon tracking speed to a total of 37.5 with a 10% increase to small cannon accuracy fall off. Now that does mean that you can fit strike cannons to this fairly well but it also actually really helps with the uh, with the auto cannons uh, as you'll see later on when this thing orbits it orbits very quickly and can actually end up pulling itself out of its orbit to a little bit further than you'd ideally want it, which is where that accuracy fall off and tracking speed actually come into effect. And as for appearance, I just love how this ship looks. But anyway, that said and done, let's have a look at fitting it. 
Now I'm currently sitting at Advanced Cannon Operation and Upgrade 4. It's taking a long time to reach Advanced 5 in both of those. They are seriously de like seriously heavy skills. So we're looking at the stats there based on only being at, up to Advanced 4 on each of those. Now for the Drumiel here, I've opted to fill the high slot with Gisty C-type small auto cannons. These are again found in Dead Space. These are the highest, like, highest DPS cannons you can find for small ships. And of course, a ship like the Drumiel really deserves the best. You can see the range on these things isn't overly great. 1.39 kilometers optimal with an accuracy fall off of 8.81. So it is a very gradual fall off. Ultimately, you're at about 50% effectiveness at 10 kilometers, but you do want to be closer to the one where possible. Just the orbit doesn't necessarily allow that. These are very fast firing cannons that do a lot of damage in a very short period of time. Now for the mid slots, because of this, I've gone for a interruptive warp disruptor. This is a faction level warp disruptor, warp jammer strength of two, which does help me lock down some of the ships that may have rigged for warp stability or those blasted Shan Yu destroyer prototypes that have plus one built in for some reason. I can actually lock those down into combat so they can't run away. Always nice to have. Then in the second low slots, we've got a Vrikolakis small energy Nosferatu. That again has a very short range, but we will be within that range whilst fighting. I can be draining their capacitor and refilling mine while that's active. That is super important and that actually brings the Drumiel here to a stable capacitor when it's active and it should be active almost all the time. It also just means that with that active I'm draining their capacitor that's going to stop my prey from using things like armor repairers or shield boosters just because they're not going to have enough power grid to actually uh, enough capacitor to actually fuel that. Finally, the bottom slot is an interruptive stasis webifier. This is just in case I come up against another fast moving target myself. Simply, simply put, things like drones, I sometimes want to be able to slow them down. Or if I'm up against another frigate, I want to stop it. Like I want to really hold that into position so that my cannons can get the absolute most. Because I'm going to be moving so fast that my cannons, the tracking is still very good. But anything that can help my cannons track that little bit better is just going to increase my damage. Hence the interruptive stasis webifier. Now for the low slots, if you've watched my propulsion uh, systems video recently, you should recognize this as a dual prop build. I'm going full on speed tanking with this. Now that means I've gone for a Gisty C-type small micro warp drive. Again, that is dead space level loot, best I could find because I want to fit this ship to the best of my ability. This is used on the approach. This actually gives the Dromiel a top speed of over 4,000 meters per second, which makes it an incredibly difficult target to hit. And I can close a di that distance insanely quickly insanely quickly which means that you just don't get chance to really run away now the second slot is a ranger small afterburner again as high level loot as i could get in here that is the meta level 8 afterburner the full officer uh, officer tier gear this is for once i am up close and personal the micro warp drive when i'm up close and personal does have that penalty of the signature radius increase which makes me that little bit easier to hit and when i'm orbiting i'm not going to be getting the full speed boost from the micro warp drive i will still be getting that full signature radius penalty so i want to switch that off reduce the signature radius and maintain as fast a velocity as i can using the afterburner that also just means that I can control things a little bit better when I'm up close and I do take very little damage um, from just moving so fast I'm so hard to hit. Now for the approach and just in case they do manage to web me and I want to get away I then have a, f a Federation Navy damage control unit. This ultimately is where the roll bonus comes into play, that five seconds extra damage control unit activation time. What a damage control unit does is, as you can see here, it gives you a flat bonus to shield, armor, and structure resistances um, just when it's cold. You can also activate it, and this will last 18 seconds, 13 seconds normally, 18 seconds on a Dromiel. That will last 18 seconds with a reactivation delay of 150 seconds, and that will boost those resistances by 8 hundred percent you'll see when i get into combat that makes this incredibly resistant to damage um, almost nothing actually gets through the shields and the armor you take so little damage very very useful on the approach or if something goes wrong and i need to basically hit a panic button and get out of there now for the rigs, this means I've gone for in the high slots, of course, I've gone for a cannon collision accelerator. That's just flat up extra damage from those cannons, 12.5%. And a cannon burst aerator in the second one, just to help those fire even faster than they already do. The third and final slot here is an anti-electromagnetic screen reinforcer. Now, ultimately, shields, as you I'm sure you're aware, tend to be not at all resistant to electromagnetic damage. So fitting this on adds a 30% 
uh, electromagnetic resistance to the shield so that anything coming from like a laser cannon doesn't just immediately clear through my shields. So again, with the damage, uh, the damage control unit activated, that pushes my shield resistances through the roof, and you'll see all that in just a moment when I uh, come to tie all this together. For the mechanical slots, I've gone for a polycarbon engine housing for the inertia modifier adjustment. That just means that when I'm orbiting, I can turn that little bit faster and thus maintain a closer orbit. The second slot is auxiliary thrusters two for a 15% increased flight velocity adjustment. Again, helps me get up close and personal as quickly as possible. And when I'm orbiting, I'm orbiting as fast as I can for maximum speed tanking. And the final slot then is a dynamic fuel valve, which reduces the capacitor requirement of my micro warp drive and my afterburner by 20% because I'm going to be using those nearly all the time I want those not to be just draining my capacitor right the way down and that's how we get that stability and if you look at the stats here already that's 252.33 dps which is an insane amount of damage for a frigate to kick out the defense is static at 4935 cold you can see that that has a 36% electromagnetic resistance there that's thanks to the dcu and to the uh, to the rigs that I've got fitted the armor as well nice uh, nice boosts there on armor 1264 on shield 1206 on the armor the capacitor is completely stable which is always useful basic navigation is a 696 but you'll see that that shoots right the way up and we've got a nice small inertia modifier there so that i can shoot around and a warp speed of 8 au which we'll uh, cover in just a moment now, if you're liking the look of the Dramiel and considering flying one of these yourself, obviously it's a very expensive ship and it is tier 6 required in order to make it and fly it. So how do you, what, what kind of ships are you going to be using in the meantime as you progress towards that? They're going to help you learn the skills and what is that kind of progression route? Well, of course, being a cannon ship, we are going to start in the Minmata Republic. Obviously, you will have started off with a Slasher, if you've got one of these to begin with, and you may have increased up into the Thrasher series of ships from there. Now, I have done a complete video on everything you need to know about the Thrashers. These are the ships that I've been using at the moment whilst preparing for the Dramiel. The Thrasher, the Thrasher 2, and the Thrasher Fleet issue are all great cannon ships that are going to be benefiting from the skills that, of course, you are training in order to prepare for a Dramiel. That said though, they are destroyers, which means you don't really want to be training into destroyer, uh, engineering, destroyer command, that kind of thing, because you're not going to be using those skills once you're in the Dramiel. So focus at that point just on the small cannon operation and small cannon upgrade skills. Once you then have those, move into advanced small cannon upgrade and advanced small cannon operation to move towards that. You also want to be training into Frigate Command because Advanced Frigate Command benefits the Dromiel. So let's have a look at some ships that benefit from that too. Now if we come down to Tier 4 here, you will see the Slasher 2 Frigate. This is a great little ship perfect for getting used to the kind of gameplay that a Dramiel uses. This is by far a speed tanking ship. You can see that this is all about that afterburner velocity. You want to get up close and personal. You're going to be training Frigate Command towards the Dramiel anyway. That's going to give you extra small cannon damage and small cannon tracking speed. This is mainly what I've been using in small PvP engagements and for doing some of the, uh, the faster ratting encounters as well. Just allows me to get in there and get training in how to actually pilot the Dramiel. Again, Frigate Command is being leveled up as we go using this. And afterburner as a skill because i'm dual propping the dramiel having the afterburner and micro warp drive skill increased are going to be useful too and those are all tier 4 and tier 5 ships so once you hit, hit tier 6 you can then move into the dramiel there's nothing else you really need to, uh, to look at at this point focus on the thrashers and the slashers those are your two main things whilst skilling into things like frigate command small cannon operation small cannon upgrade and perhaps things like afterburner shield operation frigate defense upgrade um, those kind of things as well frigate operation frigate uh, frigate engineering those kind of things are going to be useful as well and eventually then you will be prepared and ready to fly your very own angel cartel dramiel so all that said and done i think it is now time to talk about a demonstration now, one of my crew in the Catskull Cartel, Verona, has very graciously offered to loan the Caracal Navy issue for purposes of demonstration. So I'm going to warp to Planet 3 at a full distance of 100 kilometers, and we're going to showcase this in action with both of us treating the other as immediately hostile. This is going down to Hull. I don't really want to lose the Dramiel just yet. Um, but we are going to demonstrate how I actually go in and do this kind of combat. And you can see that 7.5 AU speed at the moment as well, which is pretty, pretty sweet. So as soon as I arrive, the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is figure out where the heck Verona is. Get that approach running. There we are. So start that lock process if we can. 
There we are. Get the lock process going on a standard approach with the micro warp drive active. Now, as I start to approach, I'm actually going to tick off to the side here so that I start to come in at an angle. And I really want that to be close to a 45 degree angle. I'm then going to now set an orbit of about four kilometers once I get nice and close. So at about 40 kilometers, there we are, set the approach. I'm taking a bit of a hit there, but that's okay. We're gonna swap now, swap now off the micro warp drive onto the afterburner, and we are gonna start shooting at that four kilometer range. I'm also gonna apply the, uh, apply the, uh, the, 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 the Nosferatu there to start draining Verona. And you can see that Verona is unloading. If I open up and observe there, you can see the Verona is firing all of those missiles at me right now. But you can see from my speed, that I'm not even having to activate my damage control unit. I'm moving at 1,500 meters per second. This thing just does not take the damage. Those missiles are not hitting me for anything. And I'm slowly whittling down through the shields there. That is the power of the Drummiel's speed tank. I haven't even had to activate the damage control yet, but heck, if I do, let's just pop it on for a moment. You'll see that I just stopped taking any form of damage whatsoever because the little bit that's coming through is getting about 80% absorbed. Now, ultimately, yeah, that is really now beginning to affect my, uh, uh, my capacitor with three of the... Uh, she's got three Nosferatus on me at the moment. That is a dangerous amount of drain. Normally, though, I don't think a ship is going to have three Nosferatus when attacking you. So I am going to now need to probably consider uh, beginning to warp away. But as we see um, at the, this point in time, I'm sitting quite comfortably still at very high shields. Verona now is all the way down into armor and I'm beginning to whittle through that. I don't like the fact that at this point in time, I am now below uh, cap stability thanks to those three blasted Nosferatus. That is slightly concerning, but you can see even now with that going, I'm still not taking any damage and beginning to whittle through those shields. Now, of course, if things did start to go a little bit awry, like it turns out they've got some heavy webs or something, I've got a nice autopilot here set that I can just quickly activate. That will allow me to quickly turn here, come away from combat. I'm going to take a couple of extra hits, but then I can warp out safely at a distance. Now, as you saw there, I managed to get Verona all the way down to half armor whilst taking less than a quarter of my own shield in damage. And that was with her draining all the way through my uh, through my, uh, through my capacitor with three, no less, three energy Nosferatu. So I am saying her, I'm not entirely certain. It's a female character. Um, forgive me if it is a male. <laughs> I'm just going with what's there. So thank you ever so much, Verona, for that demonstration. The Dromiel, as you can see, this is a speedy little thing. That's speed tanking in action. You saw the approach there of coming in at an angle and then orbiting in quickly, swapping out of the micro warp drive into the afterburner so that I can orbit, for a, uh, orbit at a tighter range. I then activate those cannons, start whittling down from there. Anyway, I do hope this gives you some inspiration to perhaps try out a faction frigate yourself. I adore the Dromiel. This is by far my favorite ship currently in EVE Echoes, um, and I, I love this thing. I'm actually going to take this out into low sec later today um, and go hunting some miners, I think. So if you are out in low sec, <laughs> watch out for a Dromiel turning up in your belt with the name Captain Benzie, because I will not be taking prisoners. Anyway, folks, as I said, I hope that does inspire you. Good luck if you do give it a go. It's very expensive, but they are amazing fun to fly. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.